We talked about arrays, but I, what I did not mention to you was that when you create an array in C language, the array that you create, it has a length. It means you have 10 elements in here. You have from A0 to A9. You have integer A10. So you have a, 10 integers created over here, A0 to A9. That what we, that's what we know. But you have to remember, uh, C language, C compiler, has no way of knowing what is the length. There is no protection. Which means if you go A25, your program is going to crash. You're not going to have any compilation error. Everything looks very nice. And when you run it, po, suddenly it's going to crash. It's going to say segmentation fault, core dumped. Okay, which means it means you went out of the segment of the memory that, what, that belonged to you. You went to someone else's memory. And because of that, we have a screen capture, uh, a snapshot of the memory at the moment of the crash. And we're going to save it for you so you can debug, which you're not going to do now, but it's, it's for future. So anytime your program crashes dramatically, it actually captures the state of the computer at the time of crash and saves it in a file. So you can use a debugger to take a look at the state of the memory to see what went wrong. Okay? So remember, when you have something like this, it is your responsibility to know what is the maximum index that you can go to. So what is the maximum index that we can go to in here? Nine. Fantastic. It's nine. Why? Because it's ten. It has to be, I know, it's an easy question, but I have to. So Because he looks at me like, like, of course. Yeah, it's not. Now, another thing about arrays. If I want to use statements, if I want to use words, names, things like that, if I want to hold it somewhere, C language has no data structure for that. We don't have anything called a string in C, like Pascal, like Java, like things like that. You cannot hold series of letters in a variable. There is no structure for that. There is nothing. C does not have that capability. So you cannot say string A is set to far that. You can't do that. We, have, we do not have such a thing in C language, period. OK? So take that out of your mind. But because we don't have it, they came up with a standard, a kind of a uh, regulation or uh, something that programmers came to, uh, to agree upon, how to deal with this thing, OK? How they, 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 they say that, they say, OK, if you know how uh, we initialize an array, right? We talked about it. So if I want to initialize this array and I put over here, I can put 23, 56, 1, 6. So what's going to happen over here? A0 is going to be 23. A1 is going to be 56. A2 is going to be 1. A3 is going to be 6. And what happens to the rest? No. When we initialize arrays, what happens is this. If the initialization size is less than the size of the array, the rest will be nullified. The rest will be set to 0, no matter what type of a thing you're using. So it essentially sets all the bits, wipes everything off of any data, sets everything to 0. So if you have series of doubles, they're going to be all zeros. If you have series of floats, they're going to be all zeros. If there are series of Short integers, they're going to be all zeros. If they're a series of characters, they're going to be all zero, the number zero, not the character zero. Not null. It will be null. Right, so in C, null. Null means zero. So null and zero in C are the same? They are identical. There are no difference between a null and zero. Null is the, an integer zero. Null is the integer zero. OK? And null is a non-printable character. Null is the only code that is not in the ASCII code. There is no character, printable character, associated with the ASCII code zero. OK? Which means, like, if I want to print capital A, I can print 65. If I want to print lowercase k a, I can print 92. If I want to print zero, anybody knows what is the code of zero? ASCII table. So, come on. 
Hurry up. There you go. So zero is, where is zero? zero is, no, that's not zero. That's a more hex character. Zero is 48. So if I print 48, the character zero is going to get printed. Okay? So that's for you to understand the character zero and zero are two different things. You see? Zero, it's nothing. But character zero is 48. Okay? So the shape of zero, if you want to print the shape, the graphics of zero, you have to print the, the number 48 in character format. So essentially you have to do this. So you have to do, you have to do, you have to do this. You have to say printf percent %c and then you put over here 48. Okay? So if I actually run this beautiful program of mine, what I'm going to get is nine years later, ten years later, it's going to be a zero. You see zero here? Zero and then press any key. That's the shape zero that is printed. Okay? Or I can do this. I can say, I can say, I can say, I can say, I can say character zero is set to zero. Okay? If you don't remember what the ASCII code is, you put the two single codes and the compiler will do it for you. Compiler will extract its code. So the single codes you put around the character, a single character, you are telling to the compiler, sorry, I cannot memorize all the ASCII codes. Could you please tell me what is the ASCII code of zero? And that's going to be 48. So if I actually print this like this, print percent %C and percent %D, and I print over here zero, and zero, and I go to new line. That's a beautiful question for test one. Okay? To tell you what is the output of the following program. And then what you're going to tell me will be this. So it's going to be zero and 48. Are we okay with this? Does everybody understand what is the ASCII code? And I have to put that one because this is the most common mistake. When I'm, gonna, when, I'm, when I'm about to tell you what is the standard of putting statements in, in, in somewhere, okay? So now, now that we know this, so I'm going to actually, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to say Alt F A, and in here I'm going to say 0, 1, 0, and 0. <laughs> the difference, the difference between 0 and 0. Just the name is going to confuse the heck out of everyone. Okay? So you know what do I mean by that. Yes? So you mentioned that No, no, you don't need to. That's the thing. You have the single, you have the single code operator. Oh, I'm not an idiot. If that's the case, then I'm going to give you the ASCII table. I'm going to say, this is the ASCII table, and the, having the ASCII chart, tell, tell me what is the thing. You don't need to. Okay. My tests are very fair, and if it's unfair, I'll make it fair for you. Okay, so don't worry about that. Are we okay down to here? Next. Now. So back to the thing I was talking about over here. Let's get out of a zero thingy. I said that if I say just int a10, if I just, oh, let's actually do this. So I'm doing this. Take a look. I'm going to say integer b10, OK? And I'm going to say integer a. Now I'm going to create an integer i, and I'm going to say for i set to 0, i less than 10 and i plus plus. So I want to go from 0 to 9 very quickly. That's why I did that. Then I'm going to say printf. OK. In here, I'm going to say a percent d and b percent d. But in here, I'm going to put, just to show what do I mean by that, I'm going to put an array thingy over here and an array thingy over here and a percent d over here and a percent D over here. Is everybody confused already? No. Nope. Okay, so in here I'm going to say I. In here I'm going to put AI. And in here I'm going to put again I. And I'm going to put BI. 
So what happens over here is very completely straightforward. What happens over here is this. This I is going to go here, correct? AI is going to go here. This I is going to go here. And this BI is going to go here, right? Are we OK with this? Problem? All right, let's clear this up and, and run this program and see what the output's going to be. So if I run this beautiful program of mine nine years later, you'll see this happens. Take a look. 2356, 1 and 6. 2356, 1 and 6. And what are the rest? What are the rest? No, zero. Thank you. They're all zero, correct? But when I do not initialize, what are the contents of B array? All garbage. You follow what I'm saying? When you initialize an array and the amount of initialization is less than the length of the array, the rest will be set to zero. See? OK? But if you do not initialize it at all, they all remain garbage. Now, what is the quickest way to initialize all the elements of an array to zero? Just to set the first one to zero. If I want to set everything to zero, all I need to do is this. If I just set the first one to zero, Sorry, initialize the first one to zero. What happens? Because I initialize one, the first one's going to get initialized to zero, and the rest will be nullified, right? And as a result, the outcome is going to be this. All right? Yes, sir. You just said something that I want, that I that makes me very very beep. <laughs> uh, characters are integers; they're just small. The whole point of talking about ASCII code and all those things was to tell you that characters are not characters; floats. they are just integers. Floats, they're numbers too. So let's do it. Floats. Thank you. That's a beautiful thing. So let's do this. So in here, I'm going to say float. Right? So let's make that float. And as a result, in here, I'm going to print LF. OK? So I'm not going to initialize it. And when I do not, not LF, just F. Right? So now I have an array of floats. That's a beautiful question. So if I have all floats over here, all garbage, correct? But if I just set the first one to 0, just first set the first one to zero, then what happens? The rest will be nullified. It's not a process of setting the floats to, nullify, to null. It sets all the bits inside the remaining array, everything to zero. It doesn't care what is the type. And the outcome of setting everything to zero is becoming the, the null that we are talking about. Um, thank you for the question. It was a very good question. Are we OK with this? All right. OK, so now we know that. So 0, 2, initialization, let's see. And the next thing I want to talk about, and that's the last, and we're going to go for the lab thingy, would be this. They said, OK, we, have, we can have arrays, right? And characters are suitable to hold ASCII code of stuff. So, if I want to hold a name, I can say character name, OK? Then I have to come up with a number, a number that is biggest than any name that I can imagine. How many characters is the biggest name that you have ever heard? 20, I'll put 120, OK? I'll go bananas, OK? I'll put something that like in my business logic, the logic of my business, it's impossible for the numbers to be, let's say 40, OK? Let's say 40. Did you see what I did? I said 40. What did I write over there? 41. That one is for a reason, OK? So now the valid, now the valid elements of the name array, they are name 0 up to name. 
40. Total of 41 characters, correct? But when I mentioned for what number I need this, I said for 40, right? Let's say I want to hold my own name, Fardad, F-A-R-D-A-D, -D, okay? I have six characters in my name. If I want to hold an array to hold my name in it, I need seven characters. Why? The sky is high. I'll tell you why. Give me two seconds, okay? So I'll keep this for 41. Now, I'll initialize this. So I'm going to say it's set to F A R D A and D. Based on what I explained, the A0 is going to be, the name is 0, it's going to be this. 1 is going to be 2, 3, 4, 5, correct? And name 0 is going to be what? It's going to be 0. Because I initialized it, the rest will be 0, correct? Are we okay with that? Are we okay? All right. And we just, we just talked about it. I just explained over here that in an ASCII table, Zero, I mentioned that an ASCII ta in, an, an, in an ASCII table, zero is code of no character. No character can be represented by zero, correct? By the code zero. So we can use that to our advantage. What can we say? We can say, first let's wipe it out. We can say, let's follow the standard. Whenever I want to hold a statement, a name, a sentence, a text somewhere, I use a character array for it. But because the size varies, my name is Fardat, someone is Jonathan, we have G, we have, I don't know, Alexander, it goes up and down. So, so there, is no, we, there is no way for us to know how many characters we need, right? So what do we, we allocate maximum space that we can imagine of, and we put the standard, we set the standard, we say we're going to put the characters in the array and when the data is finished, we're going to end it with a no, zero, not character zero, the ASCII code zero. And we're going to follow that regulation everywhere. All right? Doing such thing, if I print this thing, if I go um, integer i for i set to zero, i less than i less than 41 i plus plus if i go printf percent c backslash n so go to new line and print them one by one name i or oh, actually let's do something else i'm gonna say percent c and in here i'm gonna say i be less than zero and i be not equal to zero. So that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say keep printing whatever you see in the name array starting from zero, going up to the maximum size that I have, not being zero. So if I become zero, it will stop. Right? So if I do something like this, oh, I forgot to. Um, printf backslash n, we go new line afterwards. So name i, i0 less than 4, i less than 41. And sorry, not i, name i. I see everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. Name i, i is never 0, name i. When I stop to, the, when I get to the character that is 0, it's going to stop. I made a mistake over this. So, i being less than 41, and name i not being 0. So f is not 0, and it's zero, and i is 0, so it's going to print it. a is not 0, it's going to print it. r is not 0, it's going to print it. d is not going to 0, a is not, is not 0, and again, d is not 0, and then the next one is 0, it stops. Okay? In here, we are programmers. We actually wrote this i less than 41 over here because we know it's 41. 
But what did I say? C language is not aware of it. So C language does not have that safeguard. That's how C language C standards go through uh, uh, character arrays that are referred to as a, a string. So if I print this, uh, run this thing, you're going to see far that is printed. Okay? Now, this is crazy to write something like this. So they said, let's create a shorthand for this. So what they said, whenever you want to create a string, whenever you want to have a character array treated as a string, instead of going bananas like that and do it one by one, just put everything in a double quote. So line number five and line number four are identical. They are the exact same thing. It's just too difficult to go single code, single code, single code, single code. So they did it that way. So these two are exactly the same. Now if I actually do this, control F5 and print this, it's going to say far that. Then they said, this is a very good idea. Let's actually do this. Let's actually have this thing standard in C language and make all programmers follow it. They said, no problem. So what they did, they actually made, taught that thing to printf2. So printf is even aware of showing that thing. That's called percent %s. Now in here, I'm going to say name. And I only put the name of the array. So what happens, essentially, printf starts from name 0. You see line from 7 to 9? The exact same code is written in printf. Printf starts from 0 and keeps going. And then it prints it out. So if you see, again, far that is printed. I'll, I'll come back to your question. I want to make a point, OK? Are we OK down to here? Now take a look at this. Again, if somebody asks you, this is an important interview question that you want to be asked if you're going to be hired as a C programmer. The first thing that they're going to tell you, is there such thing as a string in C language? Immediately you have to say, no. It's just the standard followed by our programmers. That is a null terminated array of characters. Remember this. Print this thing on a banner. Put it at the ceiling of your room. You wake up in the morning. You see it every day. A string in C language is a null terminated array of characters. And that's it. And it's following that regulation and nothing else. Now take a look at this. In here, I'm going to say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Are we OK with this? So. And I'm going to take this out, all right? And I'm going to actually call this ABC. So it actually makes sense. OK, so I'm printing ABCs, right? And I do not need this integer I thingy over here, all right? So if I actually run this program, it's going to print ABCDFG, right? I'll be OK with this. Now take a look at this. In here, I'm going to say ABC10 is set to 0. OK? What did I do? I put a stop sign halfway through the data. If I run this program, this is what the C language is going to print. Because I just stopped the data, put a stop sign right after J. So I overwrote K with null. Does it mean that everything afterwards is wiped out? No. But well, because following the standard of a string is going up to now, the rest is ignored. This is all you need to understand today. Are we OK with this? Now, can I answer your question? First, anybody have any question with what I just said? OK. There are so many different things. We actually have a header file called string header file that has so many different functions that just deal with this standard, OK? But anyways, so yes, you were saying? Uh, I'm trying to bring it up. Yeah.
to avoid this moving ascend to to the now we are with ascend state. So if it goes with translate to zero, null has to carry on type null. No, it's not going to type null. It's going to type what a character for null is, and that's nothing. It's not going to be state space. It's going to be gut. It's going to be nothing. It's going to print the face of null, which is nothing. Okay. So if you print that in a text and move it from computer to computer, it doesn't mean it's space. It's literally nothing. Space is. Space is ASCII code 20, 2, 0. 2, 0 means a space. It means an empty space will be printed. Okay? And null doesn't have a definition. It's nothing. I can't tell you it prints space. Maybe it does, but I can't tell you that because it's not. Okay? So essentially, if I, and I shouldn't have done this. Let me copy this. OK, save. So if I actually have something like this, this is, there you go. So if I have something like this and I put one, uh, I'm going to put over here i less than 41 because I don't want it to be an endless loop, OK? So I'm going to put over here 41. And that's not name, it's ABC. So if I actually run this program, this is what I'm going to see. It looks like space, but it's not space. It's nothing. Don't think that you can have like have zero. It, you have to print 20 to be zero. So um, the characteristics of printing a null is not known. Let's put it that way. Unknown, yes. Percent C prints one character. Percent S has. OK, let's see what is the difference. With percent %C, I am printing one character, correct? So I'm going to go to new line in here, which means for percent %C, I have to put ABC, let's say, 0, because I'm putting one character. So if I run this program, it's going to print A, that's for one character. And then it's going to print ABC, which means the whole thing. It has a loop inside printf and goes through every single one until it hits zero. But percent %s, so in here, if I put over here 20, then it's going to print u, because that's the index of u. OK? It's not a string. It's a single character. But when you put an s, it means you are telling to printf, follow the standard of a string, which means start from element 0, keep printing until you hit a null. That's all. All right? It's just the standard. All right. I'm going to remove this because it's going to confuse the heck out of everyone. And. Alt F A and start doing your lap. This is done. I'm just going to stop the recording.